Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter, and I'm here to share a little bit of knowledge with you, to be honest with you. Um, as you know, I make ephemera, and I'm very often asked when I make ephemera, where do I get these little numbers from? Is it a digital? Can I buy them? Where do I get them from? So we're going to look at a couple of examples, and then I'm going to show you actually where I get them, because I don't buy them, they're free. So like little numbers here, like little column numbers here. Now, once you start looking for these little numbers, you'll see them all the time. And I love them. They're just that little bit of an accent piece here and here. It's another one on there now. So as you can see, they're just dotted around. I like them. I mean, there you go. Little red numbers there. Are there any on that one? Don't know if there's any on that one. Don't know if there's any on this one. No. So anyway, that, that's the numbers I'm talking about. I'm not talking about stamped numbers, although I do stamp numbers with rubber stamps onto pieces of off-cut paper. But that, that's what I'm thinking of. Now, what I do is I actually harvest them. So this will give you an idea of sort of the things I'm talking about. And what I'll do is I'll show you where I get them from, and then I'll show you one or two examples of how I retrieve them. So first of all, You've already got numbers. If you've got stuff in your craft room, you've probably already got numbers there. So first of all, there's old book numbers. So if you're looking for old book pages, you've probably used this for collage, but you may not use the number. The numbers are there, they're really easy. I mean, we'll sort out cutting them out in a little while. So that's just an old book page. Okay, this is a book of hymns or poetry. Um, there's these really nice numbers here. Now I might use the whole page, but a lot of the time I'll use sections of it and this might not get used. So there's another place you can actually harvest numbers from. So have a look, there's numbers dotted everywhere and I like to collect them in different styles. Um, okay, this is a modern book. Um, let's get rid of dust off it. Um, these numbers are quite large on these pages. And also if you've got a book that has chapters in it, you will probably find the introduction page or the chapter page the start of each chapter may have a title and say chapter one or chapter two. That's another thing to look for. I don't have any at the moment. That's what I'm not showing you. Um, old books. Right. This book is a book of equations and formulas and stuff like this. So if I look through here, these numbers are quite bold and they're larger. I could look even further into this and come down and take the page numbers out. But those, those are small. But if I'm looking for things this size, and you can see them, they're actually quite a nice number. They're quite bold and usually find that page numbers that appear at the top of the page like these are usually quite some distance from the starting line. So I could take quite a sizable piece. This one here is closer to that, but I could still rescue that from there. So we'll look at that as well. Um, another one. I'm there we go. This was bought in a charity shop, 99p. Um, I've read it two or three times. It's now going to become a blue book. However, if we look, there's some really nice numbers in here. So if you were to go through just one book, taking the numbers out before you did it as a glue project, then you know what? I would have. Let's see. Let's I get to the back here. Come on, Griffiths, get it together. I can't find it. I would have 424. Now, also, look elsewhere in the book. Because if we look here, there's PO Box 189. I could take that out of there. I could take the date out of there. Um, let's see. I thought I saw some others in here. OK, there's some telephone numbers here that are really quirky sequences. I could actually take those. I probably wouldn't use it as a whole telephone number, but I might take that as a block. I may take that as a block. Actually, let's take that out now before I lose this page. And we'll we'll harvest that when we start cutting them up. So all I would do is I would take this strip out and I throw it into a box, a bit like my fussy cutting to use later on. Is there anything else in here? There's columns of numbers. So I could come in here. Let's take that page out, actually. It's a reasonably good example of what I was hoping for. Let's put this to one side. So I can come in and smallest metal ruler in the world. And I need, a, I need to cut this. This paper is a little bit delicate. So I could come in here and actually just take that column out of there. 
And then if I cut that into sections, I then have interesting blocks of numbers that I could add to my ephemera. So if I just come in and go snip it there, snip it there, snip it there. So let's just about pick those up my house. So these, once they're coffee, um, not coffee dyed, when I've distressed the edges, I could put that onto a piece of ephemera and bang, there's another set of columns of numbers. So it's things like that. It's just learning to look for things like over here, there's a whole nother one there. Let's see if I can get that off with my ruler. Don't want to fail at paper tearing 101, do I? But it's it's amazing when you start looking for things, do you actually find them in multitudes? And that's what I learned to do quite a while ago because we're all on a budget. And I thought, how can I find pieces? Now, there goes another strip of numbers. Now, I could use that as in, in its entirety down the side of um, a tag, say. Let's put that over to one side. Let's just see if I can tear this without destroying it. I quite like these numbers. Now, these little strips of paper I would also keep because I stamp labels onto them with rubber stamps. Hopefully I'm in shop for all of this. I tend to be looking at what I'm doing and not not what I'm tearing. So if I come in here, if I take these numbers out of here, I'll show you what I've harvested in a second. So as you can see, I've now got four numbers and these would just go, let's get that off there. These would just go into my um, little box of numbers and when I'm looking for a little accent piece that's what I'd use so just even modern books have stuff like that if you're looking for things like fantasy fiction which this is you will probably find there are some quirky things within them like if you look at that there's some really interesting stuff within these actually there is another one there I tear that I'm not going to make you watch me do it but I will, I will trim that out later on for myself. Right, let's put all of this over to one side, if it's not in your screen. Um, another thing, this is a paperback that I found in the charity store as well, and it's got some really nice numbers in here. I mean, these, these make really nice blocks. So if we look at the ones I showed as an example, these numbers here came out of this book. So I could go through the entire book and take all of those out. But as I was saying, it's well worth looking at other things like, OK, there's a sequence of numbers along there. See, we'll lift that up here. A sequence of numbers along there. There's an ISBN number there. There are things I could just pull out and use. Is there anything else in here? There you go. There's a line of numbers there that's white on black. So if I took that out of there, I might at some point use that for something else. So I see there's ache in the back. The back is normally where information is in most modern books. Well, you watch this one won't have it. No, it doesn't have it. Maybe I've already harvested it. So that's another thing to look for. Um, another thing, if you've got raffle tickets or tickets, I very often will cut the numbers off the top. I will still use a ticket, but the numbers off the top are really useful to use. Um, one of the main things I have, let's move this over ever so slightly. Okay. This is a free telephone directory that comes through my door once every now and then. Absolutely a perfect place to harvest numbers. And there are so many numbers in one of these things. Now, I would say, um, even though this is given out free to the public, I don't think it would be advisable to take, where's, if I find it, people's personal telephone numbers and use them. However, I'm quite happy with looking through a book like this for larger areas of numbers. Okay, there's a large area of numbers there. It's on shiny, it's on the cover. I probably wouldn't use it. But look, I could split that up. I, I don't have any blue numbers. So maybe I would use blue numbers. I would flick through. Now, see, these are on yellow. Maybe I would something on yellow. I have actually got some pages marked here just because I want to show you what to do with them. There goes another set of numbers. So it's just looking at places. I'll take that out of there. I'm just going to tear this page out. Not the whole page. I'm just going to harvest this one section because I want to do that with you. 
Now, where's the other page? But as you can see, like throughout this book, and they all vary in sizes. I mean, that's a number, that's a number, that's a number, that's a number. I mean, you can see where I'm going with this. So let's take this page out. Come on, you. Right, so those are the places that I would actually look for as a resource for numbers. And there are so many numbers in here. You could sit down and watch a whole television show or a movie and just fussy cut and tear out numbers all the way through. But as I said, I wouldn't use personal telephone numbers unless you wanted to maybe cut a column of them down so you only get the last half. But I just don't feel that that's the right thing to do. Because anyone who sees anything that looks like a telephone number, there's probably someone out there who will go, oh, let's ring that number and see where it goes to. But all of these, I don't mind. They're advertising. People are paid to have their advertising in here. I don't mind harvesting these sort of numbers and cutting them up. So let's have a little look at the way I would do this. So I'm just going to do one off this sheet. So we we'll come in. Now, I like a torn edge. There is no reason why you couldn't do this. Let's leave that for harvesting when I've turned the camera off. There's no reason why you couldn't do this with a pair of scissors. That's not a problem. So I've got my strip of numbers. Come on, off you come. And then what I would do, I tend to snip if the numbers are close together. You can tell I've been gluing this morning. These scissors are a bit gluey. Right, so there you go. There's a pile of numbers that I could utilise quite easily. And it was free. So let's have a look at another one. Right, this one here. Now this is lovely. I like things that are like blocks of numbers. So getting advertising like this is really good. And always look for things like free magazines, um, when you go maybe to the grocery store, there's free magazines to pick up or pamphlets or things like that. Pick them up, see what's in them. You never know, there may be columns of numbers within those. So there you go, that's a really nice block of numbers. And there's another really nice block of numbers. So these are just the things that I look for. Right, let's talk about hints and tips and how to harvest things. So obviously we've got this book now. It's a book that's going to be used for, I will probably harvest the numbers. I think I got this book in a, in a charity store and I bought it purely when I was doing Marguerite Miller a couple of years ago, the Collage Challenge. So I can't get hold of the page. Um, the Collage Challenge, just snip that out of there. And I some of the prompts were a cartoon or a black and white image. And that's what I did with those. So I'm just going to come in, snip that down. And there you go. I've got a really nice little number. So uh, as I start using this book, I will start to harvest those numbers out of it. So, right, this one, the, the more modern looking one. What I would do with this, let's just take the bottom of the page out. Now, a quicker way to do it than snipping it is to actually punch it. So I've got this little round circle punch which I like to use for this. But what, what I found is some of them, the number is too high. It's an easy fix, guys. Just come in, snip a bit off the bottom, come in, pop it centrally, give it a punch. There you go. I've got it. Don't always assume that the number on the other side will be central. So once you come to use these and look at them, choose which side has got the more central number to it. So that's another way that I harvest harvest numbers is with a little punch like that. Let's actually do one more of those. I just realized there's another thing I can show you. So let's put this to one side. So again, with this one, one that's really cute is I have heart punch. And as you can see, let's snip a little bit off that so it's more central. Sometimes you're doing something that requires it to be a bit lovey-dovey. There you go. So I've now got a number in the middle of a heart. Now, I don't have a small square punch. OK, I tend to use dies more than punches. So just know that you could quite easily use a small square or a small rectangular punch if you've got it. So those are two really good ways of doing it. With this one here, let's see. Is this the ones I want to do it with? Let's just take this one out of here. Ooh, you can tell that's an old book, can't you? It just almost fell out of there. 
So for me, when I do numbers this large, I do tend to use a pair of scissors for these. Because what I like to do is I will take quite a sizable piece of the paper because I don't know where I'm going to use it. So I'll keep the number. I can always tear it down, but at least I've got, got the piece there. So if I came in, let's see whether my circle punch is too small for this. Oh, if I snip just a little bit off the edge of this page, I can get that quite central in there. Now you might be asking yourself, do you really use numbers that small? Yep, I do. So there you go, I've got a cute little number now. And um, if that was actually just distressed around the edge and put onto a piece of ephemera, it's perfect. Now there are a couple of other things I'll show you, although I must admit they are teeny teeny. And when I do them, I'm like, mm, would I really use that? And I do sometimes, but I've got these big hands. So they're a little bit fiddly. So let's go into this one, right? This is a more modern book. Let's just take that off there. Let's put this back over there. And now what I will use for this one is, you may have one of these hole punches. So come on in with a hole punch, line it up, pop it out. There you go, more numbers. So it's just looking at things in a different way, guys. So let's see, right, this one. Um, let's go for number 30, shall we? So this is an old book as well. The pages are sort of a bit thin for my hands. So another thing you can use, if you've got something like a slot punch for punching your tags, I just need to take the trim off the end of that a bit. If you want something that's a little more uniform or a little bit of a different shape, line up one of these tags in the middle, pop it out. Okay, that paper's just a little too old to do that, but you know what I mean. And if we pull over this one, you'll end up with um, a piece like that. And that's just from using one of these slot punches, which is sometimes how I do the tags at the top of my, um, the holes at the top of my tags. And it will give you one of those. I don't wonder why, it, I think I've picked up the wrong paper. I have, let's, let's see if I can do that again on here because that was a learn, learning curve, wasn't it? We know now that the older papers may not punch as well. Let's just take this down a little bit. So I'll just come in, line up the numbers in the middle, pop that out, and there you go. So I've got a little, little tiny little bit of a label, but sometimes those numbers are just the little bits of a character that, that are needed. And just harvest this one before I forget to harvest it. I am going to just make this one a rectangle. So just out of one book, you could get a whole pile of numbers. Out of one telephone directory, you could get a massive amount of numbers. And when it comes to the older books out there, now if I'm going to harvest these numbers, because of the fragility of these pages, I will very often get a bit of scrap paper, glue it to the back of the number and then cut the number out because I might be able to do this. But I might well be able to do it. It's just that they're, they're likely to get damaged when I store them if they're too small. So you can cut it out. But as I said, you're going to find it. It's a little bit fragile and it's likely to get damaged as you're storing them, which is why I like to back them onto another piece of paper. But it's all free, guys. So there you go, not the most perfect cutting in the world, but there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. It just, it was an idea. It was something I was asked, where do I get them from? As, as you can see, I use a slot punch, a scissors, tear rulers, punches, anything like that, even the small round punches. And don't forget, guys, these ones here, all you need to do is just cut that down there. You've got a serial number. You've also got the ticket, but you know, if you want to, snip off that edge. Guess what? You've now got a label. So just ideas, just things for you to play around with. Gives you something to do when you're watching that movie that you're not really into, but the family want you to watch it anyway. Get a book that you've got. Every single glue book will have, um, every single book that you f use for glue pages will definitely have numbers on the bottom of it. So hopefully you found that useful. 
I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.